At this point, Pat, I'm going to call on you. Uh, I'd like to hand over the presentation to Pat Maloney. Uh, Pat is a planner with over 40 years of experience planning communities and also creating airport plans. And we're very, very lucky and, and pleased to have her here today. So Pat, I'll switch slides here and just let me know when you, you want me to transition. Thank you. Um, so airports are uh, a little bit different for a lot of people. If you, if if I'm if I'm preaching to the converted or if you know about airports, I apologize. But not everybody understands airports. So airports are regulated by the federal government through Transport Canada. The Edmonton Airport Authority owns and operates the airport. It was purchased. The Villeneuve Airport was purchased in the year 2000. Regulations stipulate that owner operator of an airport controls all land uses on the airport. So under the federal regulations, the owner operator controls everything that happens on the airport. This is primarily to ensure that the strict controls are there for the safe continued operation of the airport, but also for the development of airside land uh, to generate revenue for those airports. So there's several important factors. Airports are generally divided into three internal land use categories. Airside, meaning land that has direct access to a taxiway or a runway. Ground side, that land that is not directly connected to uh, a runway or a taxiway and operational lands, which could be everything from the taxi, the runway, the nav aids, weather station. Um, there are several off airport regulations. And in the case of Illinois, there is a zoning uh, regulation as well. But if you look at the map here and you see that dotted circle around the airport, that represents a four kilometer uh, area from the center of the runway that is considered to be the outer surface. And if you think of that as being a circle 45 meters high from the elevation of the runway, that is uh, the airspace that is required to be free of interference for the safe movement of aircraft. Uh, that means that you can't have buildings that penetrate that outer surface and other things that would impact the flight patterns. Takeoff and, approach, takeoff and approach are those sort of triangular areas extending out from the edge of the runways. Uh, those are restricted primarily for height as the aircraft takes off, the height of permitted uses uh, increases up to the 45 meter outer surface area. So these are very important restrictions uh, for development around airports that do affect land off airport. Other uses not recommended in close proximity to airports are those that create undue bird attractions, smoke and steam or electronic interference. Next slide. So the Edmonton Airport Authority controls and manages development on the airport. Uh, the only thing that would potentially in, include municipal or provincial input is if the airport was actually going to subdivide land. However, airports generally don't subdivide land. They portion off lease parcels and lease land to tenants. It is highly recommended not to sell land on airports, uh, but to continue to lease those lands for tenants to use. Airports must generate revenue to operate. Uh, an airport such as Villeneuve does not qualify for a lot of government grants. Uh, the Edmonton Airports Authority operates it as uh, its airports as separate entities, and as such, it needs to be fairly self-sustaining. The Villeneuve Airport is a general aviation airport, uh, which will generate revenues through lease and rent payments, fuel sales, landing, parking fees, uh, potentially agricultural contracts to hay um, land on the airport. And as a general aviation airport, this means that the airport cannot accept regularly scheduled commercial passenger flights. They can accept charter, cargo, uh, general itinerant aircraft as private pilots, uh, flight training, medical emergency, uh, and currently there are 23 businesses on the airport, some of which have plans to grow. The purpose of the Villeneuve Airport is to provide for that commercial general aviation uh, and general aviation for small fixed wing which are airplanes or rotary wing, which are helicopters for corporate and commercial purposes. 
Uh, it provides an alternative space for the air ambulance operations, uh, can provide a wide range of services, does flight training, uh, and compatible aircraft maintenance. Uh, and as I said, it, it does not provide regularly scheduled commercial passenger flights. All of those flights are preferred to go through the Edmonton International Airport. The air traffic estimates for Villeneuve, and, and this is interesting because I understand as residents, you may consider the airport to be very loud and, and may consider it to be a bit of an intrusion. Um, the Villeneuve Airport is quite small. The number of flights is estimated, I think, to be maybe 60,000, and that includes the flight training and touch and goes. A touch and go is, is when a pilot is training and they come in for a land, they don't actually touch or maybe just barely touch the runway and they take off again. Uh, and those are counted as flights. Often Springbank Airport uh, in the Calgary area is used as a comparative airport. Uh, and it is very similar in that it's owned by the, the Calgary Airport Authority. It's in Rocky View County. It's a general aviation airport, uh, but it is much, much busier than uh, Villeneuve. In fact, in 2019, Springbank was the seventh busiest airport in Canada uh, with about 154,000 air traffic, aircraft movements. Um, Villeneuve doesn't have that. So next slide, now we're talking about noise. And noise, of course, is the biggest concern that local residents have about an airport. Noise on an airport is measured and mapped by something called a noise exposure forecast contour. These are prepared for busy airports. These are advisory maps that let a municipality know when they might expect noise complaints. Uh, and it's more for a tool for municipalities to understand what most appropriate uses are what uses are most appropriate in those areas. These contours will generally extend off of the takeoff and approach zones. Um, and CMHC advises that residential development should not be developed within a 28 noise exposure contour. Noise exposure, airport noise is measured through a complex calculation of the number of flights, the type of aircraft, the time of day and night of the flights may consider uh, predominant winds and uh, what type of aircraft is regulated by the type of airport and the length of the runway. Frankly, there is insufficient air traffic at the Villeneuve Airport to properly calculate NEF contours. What people experience here is considered to be individual occurrences. It doesn't mean that they don't occur and they aren't annoying, but they, they are, uh, insufficient in volume to actually be able to calculate a noise exposure contour. Flight paths for aircraft, particularly fixed wing, those flight paths are identified through Nav Canada and Transport Canada, and aircraft are supposed to follow those flight paths. Helicopters have a little more flexibility in their flight paths, uh, but generally speaking, uh, aircraft have to register their flight coming in and follow that flight path. This airport was built in 1976 by Transport Canada for flight training, uh, and it has been a successful general aviation airport. With this area structure plan uh, and with Edmonton Airport's um, goals for Villeneuve, there will probably be increased development, which means there could be increased noise. The important thing to understand is that the county has no authority over the airport noise. They don't have any authority over the uses on the airport. Uh, so noise complaints uh, to the county, unfortunately can result in no action. The best thing you can do is contact Edmonton Airport Authority, NAV Canada, or ultimately Transport Canada if you feel that the aircraft are not following their appropriate flight paths or are generating uh, excessive noise. Airports are also seen as economic engines for the local and regional economies. 
And the purpose of the ASP is to take advantage of the location of the airport and generate synergistic developments. Um, this too could potentially encourage the airport to grow. And if you want to know more about uh, airport planning in general, you can access a document on Transport Canada's website called Land Use and Vicinity of Airports. And if you Google, TP1247, and I'll put that in the chat room, TP1247, it gives you all kinds of information about airports and uh, land uses in close proximity to airports. So thank you, Brandy.